Let's go. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Social Exchange Project. I am your host, Shang Elizabeth Lohr, and as you can tell, we are not filming in our normal spot. Uh, we are here at OJUC, and I'm just so excited to be sitting here today. Uh, my guest is Xavier Yang. He is the owner of OJUC here. That obviously has been <laughs> the talk of the town. Um, so I think like we'll just start out with telling us a little bit about who you are and how you how you came to be here at OJUC. Okay, <clears throat> my name is Xavier Yang. Um, like Shane said, I'm the owner of OJUC. Um, I grew up here uh, in Eau Claire. I graduated from Eau Claire North um, back in 2014. Um, I went to college in La Crosse, uh, Viterbo University. <clears throat> um, currently, I also work at um, my parents' a daycare facility. Uh, Adventures begin childcare um, as a, a teacher, a teacher assistant, uh, assistant director. Kind, kind of, of do an all-in-one. All in yep. <laughs> And then um, I'm also a firefighter and medic um, here as well too, um, and that's volunteer uh, volunteer basis, and also with Ojusi. So it's been insane because you opened up Ojusi last fall, right? Or towards the end of summer, end of you summer. purchased. Yep. How did that come to be? Like, tell us a little bit about um, so like I, that experience. Ojusi has been in the in the makings for three to four years now. Um, the biggest thing was I was doing demographics to try to figure out uh, what needed to be brought to Eau Claire, like what kind of foods and what different um, varieties should be brought here. And one thing that always came up was seafood. Um, like everyone wanted like a Joe's Crab Shack type thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to stick with corporate. I used to work for corporate and I just didn't really agree with their beliefs and their values. So then I wanted to start um, something small um, it kind of worked its way up, and seafood was one big thing that I noticed that a lot of um, a lot of the demographics that I put in place, that's one thing that always popped up, um, yeah. no matter what form it was, but it was always seafood. So then um, <clears throat> I come to find out that this place was available, so then um, I went in and... Uh, you know, I was like, you know, I'm going to... Uh, <laughs> Didn't you kind of just purchase this without telling your family? Yeah, so like how <laughs> so how it came all about was I just kind of... I went in and said, hey, um, I'm going to be doing a restaurant, a seafood restaurant here in Eau Claire. And they were like, okay, like when? And I'm like, within the next like two weeks. And <laughs> sure enough, um, you know, within two weeks, we opened up and um, we launched Old Juicy. Um and yeah, it's been a roller coaster, but it's been pretty fun. I mean, clearly, like with everything that's been happening. So I just want to say how we <clears throat> met. Yeah. Um, so it was my birthday in September of last year, and I was trying to find a venue that would be able to house like the comedians and the music acts that obviously are my friends and we're going to perform at my birthday party. And I just wasn't able to find a venue. And so I had initially called, um, it was Clear Waters, mm -hmm. because that's, I thought the venue would be really great. And they referred me to you, mm -hmm. and that's how I met you. I will say that the hospitality that we received was beyond like comprehension because every single one of my friends mentioned just how welcomed they felt, and they're mm -hmm. from like all over, like all different backgrounds and things. And like I just remember when you showed up and said, "Hey, Shang, this is your birthday gift," and it's a J <laughs> it was a JMO um, <laughs> bottle, but it was just like such a different experience, and I felt right away like that I was bought into like who you are as a person. And mm -hmm. I just feel like you care so much about everybody that comes through here. It does not matter who they are, where they come from, how they look like, like you've always just provided that. And it's been evident from clearly all the music shows that you've been throwing. So mm -hmm. like what motivates you to keep giving back to the community and like do all the things that you do? Yeah, so growing up, um, my I had teenage parents. So my mom was 15 when um, she had me and <clears throat> they were really young, and we we needed a lot of help from the community, um, and they always gave back. You know, all my teachers growing up, I remember um, if I didn't have any of the school supplies, I know that, that that came out of their own pocket, and they always had things ready for me. And my parents, they've, they've always had, gave us the necessities that we needed, but um, the community definitely um, had a big impact on me. So right away when I started Old Juicy, I told myself that if I put myself in a position that I'm able to give back right away, I will. And 
literally the first month we did a, a backpack drive. So yeah. um, I believe it was every every pound of seafood that you bought. Uh, if you bought if you bought a pound of seafood, you get it for free if you bring in a, a bag a backpack of supplies. Mm-hmm. And gosh, I, I want to say we did over four. We got over forty backpacks, and we ran it for a little under two weeks because um, I wanted to get to the school right when um, right before school started. Mm-hmm. Just just in case for the students that didn't have backpacks, where they had ones that were like really old. Yeah, because like, it was around fall time yep. too. Yeah. So it was um, right in the September when we uh, delivered the backpacks. Um, and it was it was at uh, Elk Mound Elementary School. So I grew up in Elk Mound, um, but I graduated at Eau Claire North. So, but um, yeah, giving back to the community was a big thing that I wanted to do because they had such a big impact on me growing up. And all my teachers and all my mentors, everyone that I've had contact with, they played a big part of it on mm-hmm. um, my life growing up. And when they say it takes a village to raise kids, like, it, it definitely takes does. a village. So. I mean, yeah. obviously tonight you're going to be throwing an event. Um, you've had one, maybe two events dedicated to giving back to the community, but yep. certainly with youth and things like that. I just found out, too, that your mom used to be an ELL teacher. Yep, a local slain I love your family, yeah. first of all. It needs to be on the record. <laughs> Absolutely love your family. Every time uh, I'm here, Ku and I um, you know, are here, mm-hmm. we feel like we're a family here. And yeah, that is very rare to have at a venue, mm-hmm. like to... to be able to walk in and feel um, automatically like welcomed and cared for like that is the culture here and i think that's why people keep coming back but yeah so tell me a little bit about like why you started all like one of the things that's been in like social media and been known to the community is that not only do you give back to the community by giving a, a lot of free foods and meals and things away um, but also that you're bringing in a lot of like Hmong artists and things like obviously we've done some collaborations and things like that together mm-hmm. but tell me more about like how that started and why that was important to you yeah so so growing up I remember um, going to a lot of concerts and shows um, outside of Eau Claire you know having to travel to the cities um, and not here within my own hometown and I figured no one's no one's ever done it like, I don't think we've ever had a venue, right? Yeah. How is yep. just primarily Hmong artists? Yes, yeah. So I, I wanted to be, not only that I want to be the first one, but I want to be the one that kind of laid down, you know, the pathway for that. Yeah. And um, I think the biggest thing is just getting it started and doing it. It was really hard, honestly, because I, I was like a nobody, and nobody knew what OGC was. Um, and Eau Claire is very small compared to, you know, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and like Madison. Yeah, where um, a lot of the Hmong artists yep. are, yeah. So then majority of them, they, they haven't heard of Eau Claire, or they've mm-hmm. driven through it, and that's it. They haven't, like, spent time here. Well, I wanted to change that. You know, I wanted to be where these artists, they come in and see what my city is and see how my people here are and see how they're treated. And sure enough, um, our first show was with uh, Sons of No Town with Wingy Entertainment with Chinchilla. Mm-hmm. Um, and... DJ and we Coolio, love Chinchilla. Though. Yeah, we love so DJ he so Chinchilla, he initially reached out to me and wanted to do a show, and that kind of threw me off because I, that's what I was trying to do for the whole first month. And first open. of all, I feel like I'm such a huge fan of Chinchilla. Like the caliber that he's yes, had yep. is it's like insane. So how like how did that come about? Yeah, so he he reached out to me on social media and said that he um, wanted to do a show, um, if I was open for it and. I told him, yeah, like that's that's what I've I've been trying to do for a whole month, and yeah. I just didn't know how to go about it. Um, and so he came out here, him and Killer Universe came out here. They looked at the venue, um, we talked about it, and you know we went with it the first show, and that was at Sons of No Town. And just from there on, we just been doing shows, you know, constantly um, every month. You know, we do about two to three shows a month. And you're usually like packed to the rim. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah, it's it's always it's always been a full house, which is yeah. which is amazing. I know because I'm usually here. That's yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's and that's what I want, you know. And, and I want to go a little more just beyond that too, where um, now we have all these Hmong artists. They're they're coming here to shoot music videos and putting like Eau Claire on the map, and that's mm-hmm. that's like really big. That's big time, you know. We got David Yang. He shot his music video here downtown Eau Claire, mm-hmm. um, with Dorchi Yang, and then you got Chenning Zhang shooting his music video here at Old Juicy. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, you got all these all these artists that didn't really know what Eau Claire was. Mm-hmm. Now they're they're coming back here and, and putting this out there and kind of putting us on the map where we 
you know, where I think we belong. You know, we we deserve to to have the same things that like St. Paul or Madison mm-hmm. or, or Minneapolis, what they do. Like we deserve that here in Eau Claire, even though we're smaller, um, but we definitely deserve it. And I think too, like just the fact that like one of my biggest passions with this platform is elevating arts and people of color and BIPOC and definitely Hmong people, mm-hmm. and like be able to see how Oh Juicy has been like growing the space for Hmong patrons and artists like that has been an incredible like experience and journey for me as somebody who's been partially involved right mm-hmm. like for you it must be mind-blowing that you've built such a strong relationship with all these different artists that they keep traveling an hour and a half yep. to come here to perform at our small venues when they have bigger venues mm-hmm. in Minneapolis. So like that must just be insane. Yeah, I, I still can't wrap my mind around it. Um, yeah. Every show, I'm, I'm so nervous that, you know, people aren't gonna show up um, and it's it's gonna be a bust, but you know, the, the community here has shown so much love to these artists that are mm-hmm. coming from so far away. You know, we have Art Lee from Michigan and yes. he comes, you know, he's a 10 hour drive and he comes out at least also once a month. Also love Art Lee, like so, we love yeah. art. <laughs> so like getting these artists, you know, coming from so far away and to spend their time here, their free time here, and to, you know, just to bless us with their talent. Mm-hmm. And um, it's amazing to see that. Because to see from where we started till now, within you know seven eight months, it's yeah. It's so how amazing. long have you been open? Uh, just we just hit eight months. So holy crap! Like the fact that you've been able to build such a platform in eight mm-hmm. months is insane. Like yeah. you have been plastered everywhere, not just for the food, you know, but certainly for all the events that's being thrown. We've had so many conversations about what BIPOC means to us and like giving back to the Hmong community. And this is exactly why it's very hard for me to affiliate myself publicly all the time with people. Mm-hmm. But you are somebody that I like ride with. Yeah, like, I appreciate that. Ride or die with mm-hmm. because not only like do I feel like family when I'm here, but I think our values very much align with how mm-hmm. we want to provide like what we feel is like social impact in our community. Yep. And I, again, like I love that you want to get back to a community that has given back to you um like what do you see as like i guess the next few months or the next year and what and how you're going to grow juicy uh i think honestly keeping things the way that they are now um i know change is good Mm -hmm. uh, but i opened up a restaurant during a pandemic and that's it's insane like i don't think i I never imagined myself doing that Mm -hmm. uh especially the past couple years we had with covid and everything um all the mandates and the mask and all that stuff it's it kind of threw everything everyone in a in a whirlwind and opening up an establishment like this and then doing these shows like you know there's a big risk to it but yeah you know it, it's something that we need after being cooped up for two two and a half years mm-hmm. uh, of, of covid and i think now is a good time where you know everyone we could kind of slowly come out you know we still practice you know um social distancing as much as much as we can um and just coming out having a good time and just enjoying life because as we know life is very very short um for what we have and like so yesterday yesterday we i feel like you and i are always doing a whole bunch of different things together yesterday with dennis beale a part of perception and one of his biggest goals is to get back to black and biracial youth Mm -hmm. he's a mentoring program and i used to be a mentor you talked a little bit about like your like care and concerns for the youth, especially Hmong youth, yep. and giving back. Like, I guess I want to learn more about, like, you know, the area of giving back to youth. Like, I feel like every single time I'm here, there's always so much happening. There's people here from the university studying. There's people here who's, like, doing film. And, like, mm-hmm. you're giving back. You never really say no to people, especially the youth. Like, tell me more about that. Yeah, so growing up, um, I, I I didn't get that opportunity. Like I didn't have someone come up to me and say, "Hey, you know, you could utilize my space. You could do this and this. You know, whatever you, whatever you dream, whatever you want." I I, I never really had a role model like that besides my parents and my immediate family. Mm-hmm. So, you know, having these youth reach out to me and say, "Hey, you know, I want to have a study session in your basement. Is that okay?" It's like, yeah, like that's that's awesome. You know, like mm-hmm. utilize my space. You know, and and they is there a charge? I'm like, no, like. You come out and you know bring your friends and you guys can study and if you guys want food and stuff you know we'll we'll, we'll get you guys squared away and mm-hmm. um, I have different um, other like videographers that are new and photographers that are new that just kind of want to get out there and I'm like yeah like come out and, and shoot some videos shoot some some photos and whatnot and that's okay because you know to get somewhere you got to start somewhere and if they don't have those opportunities to start 
Mm -hmm. um, I think they're just going to be where they're at and complacent. And I, I didn't get that growing up, so I, I kind of want to change that mold. And I, I want other establishments and other business owners to kind of see, like, you know, there's more to just business and money. making the money. Yeah. Um, it's about the people. And that's one reason why I left working for corporate because – to them, it's all about the numbers, and obviously, you need numbers to. You need some sort of metrics. Yep. To yeah. sustain your business and whatnot, but you know, at the end of the day, how you treat people, they're gonna, you know, come back and return everything tenfold. You know. And yeah. We don't do anything to receive anything, but we do it out of love and our core values and our beliefs, and that's mm -hmm. that's why we do what we do. And my parents always told me, they always told me that growing up, like you know, never do anything, expecting anything in return. Yeah. You know, because if you do that, then there's you don't really have a purpose but right. if you have a purpose and a belief for doing what you want to do then um you know anybody that questions you you can at least say hey you know i do xyz because i believe in this you know mm -hmm. and this is what i see my core values are this and so. i love your parents so much <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're literally awesome. the best like they're so great and they're always so like incredibly like welcoming to me and just super kind people and you talked about like growing up with like them being teenage parents and things mm -hmm. like how was that it was hard um they you're the oldest right yep i'm the oldest yeah. yep. okay and uh my mom was she was still going to school she 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 got her, her master's degree um and i remember uh her being in the 24-hour lab at uw claire uh and i was taking care of my two sisters at that time while she was doing homework in the in the 24-hour lab at like almost midnight mm -hmm. you know so my dad had to work full-time so my mom would go to school full-time um, until she f uh, finished her degree and whatnot, but growing up it wasn't easy. Honestly, uh, you know they they loved us and they gave us everything that they had um, to kind of get us where we are. And uh, it, it, was, it was tough growing up, but I'm glad I grew up that way. I don't have any regrets about it because it made me who I am today. And mm -hmm. I humble myself a lot. You know, uh, even if I don't have anything or if I have whatever I need and whatever I want, I still take a step back and say, you know, like, look at where we came from, you know, mm -hmm. and to where we're at now. Like, I'm I'm blessed with everything like I have. a lot of so. humility there. Yeah, yep, yeah. and I, I'm, I'm completely blessed, you know. My sisters, they all understand, too, like, you know, the position that Old Juicy has put us in, I know that it's kind of, it's hard to grasp, uh, like, the level of understanding like of, like, of, of, what like, what, of, yes, of what we yeah. did here in such a short amount of time. Yeah. And my sisters, they it's hard for them to wrap their minds around that. And I told them that, you know, you got to just be humble about it and be happy that, you know, we're in this position. And, um, that, and that's one reason why we, we give back so much. You know, mm -hmm. we, we do free community dinners. Um, we did uh, free soup, free coffee, you know, during those cold times, um, <clears throat> during winter and whatnot. So there, there's a lot that we, we want to do. And that stems from, you know, growing up the way we did um, with teenage parents and, um, so work yeah. for every single like opportunity that yep. you can get and now you want to provide opportunities to other people yeah definitely i love that and i think too another thing that i wanted to speak about is like it's not a secret that you've had some pushback and some barriers or challenges mm -hmm. with how you have chosen to operate as a business i don't think a lot of businesses have the same kind of mentality that you do mm -hmm. let's just put it that way and i feel like you've had you know some pushback like how has that been for you? Uh, it, it's been rough, honestly. Yeah. Um, you get a lot of criticism, dude. Yeah, like a lot, a lot of hate sometimes yep. for no reason when you're just trying to do something good. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, tell us more about that. Yeah, so, you know, the, the biggest thing was, um, the biggest thing that Im impacted me when I first started was um, the Veterans Day special that we did um, on Veterans Day mm -hmm. where we um, gave away the um, Which is unheard of. Yeah, like, our you do, No business ever does this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, where we give away our Dilly Bob special, which is a seafood platter. It's $150 worth, isn't yep. it? Yeah. And we, we did that for mm, about an hour, hour and a half, almost two hours. And we had some customers that were um, just upset and just not happy and um, just being rude to my staff. And we had to close our doors early because, because of it, you know. And um, we, we received a lot of backlash from that uh, because... We, we had to close our doors early, and um, we had a lot of guests at the same time. You know, you, you have 100 people come in at once and order. It's You got to – there's a way that you got to – you can't just shove everything out and, yeah. and give it out. You know, it's kind of 
it takes time, you know, everything is made fresh, you know, as, as you guys um, have seen. And um, it was just hard getting that backlash, like, mm-hmm. from the community after that, uh, not even that night, like, after that event. Mm-hmm. Um, there, was, there was a lot, you know, um, a lot of things, like, a lot of racial things that were thrown out and um, just discriminatory, uh, discriminatory stuff that was being thrown out. And that, you know, that wasn't just our intentions. And, yeah, yeah, so, like, it was just, it was, it was really hard to deal with that. You know, and honestly, after that, like, that was almost a breaking point for me. Like, I was, I was, like, almost done. Like, I was, like, you know what? Like, you just want to do something nice for the community. Yeah. And, and I'm, just, like, I was just yeah. trying to give back and then, like, to get, you know, So slammed. much hate yeah. and negativity. And it really hurt. And, you know, um, I talked to my parents about it and I told them, you know what? It's okay. Like, we'll operate the way we do. Just keep doing what we do. And then, mm-hmm. sure enough, Thanksgiving comes around and we did a free community dinner. Mm-hmm. Um for for the entire community free you know and i think we served over 350 plus people um and with with turkey mashed potatoes stuffing and our seafood too we even gave um our seafood away that that evening as well uh while we're doing that um we got a lot of backlash from some businesses um and my biggest reason was doing it because growing up we used to um help out a lot at uh, like hope gospel we mm-hmm. volunteered a lot my parents took us out and we volunteer at the community table and volunteer there, like giving, handing out food and whatnot, and like cleaning up stuff. Mm-hmm. So to alleviate them, because they get hundreds of people that come, especially and eat dr- there. during that time yep. period. So then yeah. to alleviate them, I was like, you know what? Why don't we, why don't we do something like that? So then not everyone's going over there where we could we could divide that. Even if it's at a quarter or not even half, but a quarter of the people from over there here, that's going to alleviate them over there and then it's going to leave more room for other people to come in and and enjoy a meal that um that need it or that just want a meal you know yeah. and, it, and we weren't we weren't like telling people that they can or can't come it was open for the entire community i was gonna so. say like you were op- like you didn't make anything like there's an eligibility or a criteria nope. yeah. you were feeding everyone yep yeah if you if you were hungry and you didn't have anyone to spend time with during the holidays come out and we had a few costumes Holidays is so hard for so many people yep. too of it all is. backgrounds it's not just low income and yes. people in poverty it's mm-hmm. really sometimes just like you're building a community i don't yep. think that i think what people are struggling with is like grasping the idea that how can a business be able to provide so much free food so much free services and like you're again like a yes man in a good way like because you mm-hmm. want to get back so badly but i know too like part of social justice work for me and like part of my platform is social impact. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I fuck with you so hard is because you get it. Like you really have supported me and helping elevate so many marginalized individuals and groups of people Mm -hmm. that don't often have that voice to speak for themselves. And like one of the things that I really appreciate about our friendship because I I, I really, really like love you as a person. I appreciate you as a person. I really Mm do. And it's really hard sometimes for me to find people that care about our community the way that I care about our community, you know? Mm -hmm. And you're one of those people. So social justice work, like, is really difficult. There's a lot of pushback and there's a lot of barriers and challenges that comes with that. But you have been somebody that really understands those values, those core values. And your family reflects it, your venue reflects it, and you've been just really brave at, like, standing up for what you believe in and standing up to people who don't believe in that, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, so I guess I just want to say thank you yeah, thank for you. always yeah, like helping me out and appreciating like the things that I'm trying to bring to mm-hmm. to Claire. And so um, I guess like before we like wrap up, um, is there anything that you feel is important that the community should know or that like just anyone should know about who you are and like what you stand for and yeah. things like that? Um, the biggest thing that uh, I want all my my guests that come in here um and customers um i don't i don't want it to feel like a business transaction yeah uh, at the end of the day yes i am a restaurant i am i am a, an establishment and whatnot Your and you business. are you are buying and paying for um goods and services i get it but you know when you walk through the doors i i don't want that to be on someone's mind like saying oh you know i this is my budget for this meal like I, I don't want that i want it to be where you come in and you feel welcome and you're happy and just you want to be here you know and not worried about you know prices or tipping or can i afford this or can i afford that like i, I don't need that you know i want you to just come in here and just feel like you know like it's, it's your place too and honestly that's that's how it is you know i have mm-hmm. i have students that come here and 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 do study sessions i'm not here like 
Wow. You're so trustworthy. Yeah, like I like I'm not present. <laughs> and like yeah. you know, they're like, Are you is that okay? I'm like, Yeah, like that's totally fine. And that's the kind of person I am, you know, where my, my place is open and I want you to treat it like like it's your place because if you if you treat a place like it's your own place, you treat it with respect and with kindness. But if you come into an establishment and you don't care about it because it's it's not yours, well then you're gonna treat it however you want to. But mm-hmm. that's why I I let these individuals know that hey, treat it like it's your home, treat it like it's your own business. Like that's okay with me. Mm-hmm. You know, if, and you, if you want to say that you're part of Juicy, yeah, go ahead. You know, because if if you believe in it, then I'm okay with it. You know, mm-hmm. and that way the level of respect is there, the level of understanding is there. But you know, you have individuals that come in and they just want to cause a ruckus and and do whatever they want to do. Yeah. Um, that's not what that's not what we are here that's not what we believe in and that's what i love about you too because you are huge just like i am like one of my hugest like mo- like mantras is that you're building relationships building mm-hmm. community not transactions and you've has like a lot of success in doing that where yep. people do like respect the space respect you but like if it comes down to it you have to be firm you have to be assertive mm-hmm. and you've been that like yep. you've been able to to have that structure as well but yeah, like, again, I just really appreciate your time, and I, like, love you as a person so much. You're literally Thank like a you. brother to me, mm-hmm. and I just really appreciate you having this conversation with me today. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go.